welcome to my channel. This video is all about how you can recognize if your dog needs more from you. I know that I always want to be doing the best for my dog. I want to be providing my dog with everything that my dog needs and I often wonder is my dog happy? Does my dog need anything else from me? Am I providing the best life that I can for my dog? It can feel overwhelming to make sure that my dog is eating the best kind of food, that my dog is getting enough mental stimulation, enrichment, that my dog is getting enough physical exercise, that I'm taking my dog out enough and that I'm letting my dog rest enough. There can also be contradicting beliefs and who do I believe when it comes to how to care for my dog and what is the best for my dog. But there are some things that I look out for to determine if my dog needs anything more from me because it's hard to know if I'm spending enough quality time with my dog. And there are some questions that I ask myself when I start to wonder if my dog needs anything else from me. The first thing that I ask is, when was the last time I spent quality time with my dog? Days can go by that are more stressful, or even weeks that are more stressful or more busy, and my dog doesn't get the same amount of quality time every day or every week. So that's the first thing that I check in with and make sure that I'm scheduling enough time to spend with my dog that is quality time. Sometimes I can take my dog out for a walk or play with my dog, but it's not quality time. Quality time is when I'm really there present in the moment with my dog, when I'm not trying to multitask or when I'm feeling guilty for spending time with my dog because I believe that I should be doing other things. Quality time is really being present and there in the moment with my dog. It can be really easy to put off spending time with your dog, quality time with your dog, or to forget. To just go through life kind of on autopilot and go through the motions and taking care of your dog without actually being mindful and there with your dog. Dogs are really great at bringing us into the present moment and trying to help us enjoy the moment instead of thinking of other things or multitasking. Dogs are really mindful. But as I mentioned, sometimes life happens and I can wonder if my dog is getting enough of that quality time. Quality time is really important in our relationship, in understanding each other, in growing our bond, strengthening our bond. And also quality time can help me really get to know my dog, their personality, so that I know exactly what they need from me or when they aren't feeling it that well because I know them so well. Every dog is different and every dog needs more time or less time or enjoys spending quality time with you in different ways, but there are some things that you can look at to see if your dog is getting enough quality time with you. The last thing you want to do is have your dog feeling lonely, isolated, or ignored. Dogs need both rest by themselves and they also need physical exercise. They need mental exercise, mental enrichment, and they also need play, just free fun play. Play is a lot less structured than providing enrichment or physical exercise. There aren't rules, you just let your dog be your dog. The amount in each category of rest, play, enrichment differs depending on your dog's breed, your dog's age, your dog's past experiences, if they're reactive, if they have fears or anxieties, their personality all play a role in how much time your dog needs in each category. But every dog does need play, rest, physical exercise, and mental stimulation. To know if your dog is getting enough, you can look for signs that your dog is bored. A dog that is bored will spend a lot of time sleeping, but remember that dogs do spend most of their day sleeping. This is normal. What you wanna look out for is you, you wanna make sure that your dog is ready and willing to jump up and play, that they get excited when it is time to go outside for a walk, when it is time to play, when it is time to do a food puzzle. When you are initiating an activity with your dog, you want your dog to jump up and be excited. You want your dog to be ready and willing whenever you invite them to an activity. If your dog isn't that excited or if you notice that their excitement has dropped 
or lessened than it had been in the past, this is a sign that your dog is bored or even depressed. Of course, it's going to change as your dog ages. As dogs get older, they definitely aren't as excited and ready and willing and don't have as much energy as they did when they are a puppy. What you want to look out for is sudden changes. If last week or last month they were a lot more excited than they are now. A drop in excitement and willingness to do an activity can also be a sign of pain or illness. So if you notice this, you may need to take your dog in to get checked. What I try to do is every single day set aside some time for my dog and every day we may be doing something different. Maybe in the summer months we're going out going for a walk more often and in the colder months we are inside doing a food puzzle or I'm training them some tricks or I'm even just giving them a massage. For some dogs giving a massage is a really stimulating activity. For some dogs, it's more relaxing. Again, you have to know your dog and what activities they enjoy, what activities are restful for them, what activities are exciting for them, and do the activities that your dog needs that day. Again, why it is important to really know your dog, know your dog's personality and know your dog's preferences. Some dogs like certain toys and some dogs prefer certain types of cuddles or massages. Things that you can do with your dog every day or activities that you can rotate throughout the week are things like walking, training, and when I say training, I don't mean training for obedience, I mean doing training for fun, teaching your dog tricks, getting their mind going, just doing things for fun, not to get them to obey you. You can explore nature with your dog, play fetch, do agility with your dog. There are even home agility kits that you can get in your backyard or even your living room. You don't have to take them out to an actual class. Doing things like nose work, again, you can do this at home. There are a lot of different nose work games that you can do with your dog at home. You want to keep things interesting for your dog by rotating different activities, but every day setting aside some time to do an activity with your dog and rotating the type of activity, whether it works their physical body, whether you go for a jog or a run, or whether you are at home doing a food puzzle with your dog. Making sure that you provide both physical stimulation and mental enrichment. Another sign of a sad or depressed dog, a dog that needs more from you, is a dog that loses interest in activities or games fairly quickly, that doesn't want to play or even a dog that doesn't want to eat. Sad and depressed dogs can also be destructive. They are more likely to have accidents in the house. They don't run to greet you at the door when you get home. And any other changes in their behavior that isn't age related or isn't injury or illness related, something that you know the cause of, if it's sudden and unexpected, or if you've just no noticed gradually over time your dog isn't just doesn't seem to have that spark in them anymore. They're not excited to greet you. They're not excited to eat their dinner. This can definitely be a dog that is sad, that feels like they need more from you, that needs more spark, excitement, joy, play, structure, stimulation, enrichment in their life. A dog that gets in trouble a lot or is misbehaving, especially if you know that the misbehaving dog knows how to act or has behaved in the past. This is another sign that your dog needs more from you. A misbehaving dog can also be a stressed dog or a dog that has pain or an illness. Misbehaving can also be a sign of a health issue. So again, make sure that you're getting your dog's health checked out and covered if you are noticing a lot of these signs. But often a misbehaving dog is a dog that's trying to get your attention and they're doing it in a way that gets more negative attention, but at least it's some attention. They're acting up, they're misbehaving, they're getting attention. Maybe it's not the type of attention they want, but in their eyes, it's better than no attention. A disobedient dog is a dog that knows the right thing to do, but chooses to do the opposite or something else or the wrong thing. A disobedient dog is a dog that has been trained, but is choosing not to perform the trained behaviors. This is a dog that is definitely asking for attention. This is a dog that needs more quality time with you. And when I say quality time, 
I mean those moments where you are present and together, mindful in the moment with your dog, doing an activity together. That can even be grooming them, that can be playing with them, or even just sitting and talking with them. Another sign that your dog needs more from you is if your dog is gaining weight. Sometimes it can be really easy to show our dog love and affection by giving them treats and giving them food, even though this isn't always the healthiest choice. An overweight dog is a dog that can gain health problems as they get older due to their weight. So instead of just giving your dog treats or food to show them love, give them time to show them love. Give them attention. Give them activities to do with you that the two of you can do together. If your dog's nails are overgrown, this can be a sign that your dog needs more from you. Overgrown nails is really unhealthy for your dog's posture, for your dog's spine, which can lead to problems as they get older. And it's also a sign that they're not out walking on pavement or just being out moving enough. Often nails can get filed down naturally if you're taking your dog out regularly. Although long nails doesn't always mean, and overweight dogs don't always mean that they need more from you. I know my dog Millie, who is a smaller dog, her nails often look very overgrown, even though she gets the exact same treatment as my dog Penny, whose nails look very short all the time. Millie's nails grow faster, and taking her on walks doesn't seem to file down her nails, even though she's getting the exact same amount of walks in the exact same places as Penny, my other dog. So again, everything can differ depending on the dog, the breed, and a lot of other factors. But in general, if you're seeing many of these signs, or if you're thinking back and you're realizing that you haven't spent that much quality time with your dog, this is definitely the perfect time to schedule in some time with your dog. With life and everything, I'm definitely a huge planner. I need to schedule everything. So I will actually put down the weekly activity that I want to do with my dog every week and think ahead of time the type of things that I want to do with my dog, whether we're going to go out somewhere or I want to do a simple game inside or if I want to work on trick training with them. And I like to think about that on Sunday and then know what I have to do up until next Sunday but trying to set a time sometime each day whether sometimes it's 10 minutes and sometimes it's an hour just making sure that I'm getting that quality time every day with my dogs and if you have more than one dog it can be helpful to sometimes split the time up still having one-on-one -on -one time with each dog instead of doing everything together Again, it depends on your dogs, your lifestyle, your preferences, and the personalities of your dogs. But I hope this video was helpful and gave you some ideas or insight into things you can do with your dog and whether your dog needs more from you if your dog is bored and how you can help your dog become happier, joyful, and excited about life. For similar videos, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I'm willing to do anything to provide my dogs and cats the best life possible, full of love, joy, harmony. I believe my animals are worth it. I remember wanting to provide the best quality of life and becoming overwhelmed with diets, products, training tips, and everything else. Feeling frustrated, helpless, overwhelmed during challenging behaviors to now living a peaceful, trusting partnership with my dogs and cats. I tried to understand what my animals needed, which was impossible without understanding their emotions and energy. I am now using these tools and practices to transform relationships with dogs and cats into ones that are synergetic, where we work together and listen to each other. I honestly believe that dogs and cats are here to help us be better human beings. Are you ready to take your relationship with your animal to the next level? Form a bond built on mutual love, trust, understanding, and respect. Invest in your pet's peace, happiness, and quality of life. Enroll in synergy, heartfelt alliances between witches and their familiars, a guide for witchy dog and cat guardians. Merge with your animal's energy and collaborate to manifest your desires while increasing the well-being of both you and your animal. Pets are more than just animals. They are spiritual beings with unique personalities and energies. Do you love your dog and want to live in harmony with your dog while understanding their needs and emotions? Instead of feeling frustrated or overwhelmed by your dog's behavior, improve your relationship with your dog and help them heal from any physical, mental, or emotional issues. I offer a unique combination of positive 
reinforcement training methods with energy healing techniques, animal communication, and tarot. Receive a personalized action plan created by a certified dog trainer and animal communicator. This package is perfect for anyone who wants to enhance and enchant their life with their dog. Don't miss this opportunity to get this amazing package. Apply now and get ready to create a magical relationship with your dog.